In this exercise, we're going to use key light to perform a basic color key operation on a piece of green screen footage and to perform a very basic composite with a piece of background footage, in this case just a JPEG. If we just take a look at the footage, I'll just select the source image first. We can see this is a piece of, uh, a piece of green screen footage. It's a short image sequence. And if I select the background and hit 2 to uh, view this in the uh, viewers number 2 channel, you can see that this is kind of uh, a just a kind of an old sort of industrial office kind of environment. So this is essentially what we're going to use as the basis for this uh, for this basic key and A over B composite. So to start, we need to add key light. We will use key light for this. So I'll just hit Tab and start to type until key light appears, and put it in. And you can see there that this is uh, this this has actually got four ports. There's a source port that always goes to our foreground, so we'll connect that now. We have a background which always goes to our background, and then we have a couple of uh, ports for masks which we will come back to. We'll use at least one of them later on. And then we connect key light up to our viewer. Hit number one so that we're actually looking at it, and you can see that what we're seeing now is the um, is the green screen footage, and that's essentially because key light is 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 configured to perform an A over B, but at the moment we haven't done any 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 selection to remove any of the green from the environment, and we also haven't set the uh, the, the the key light to actually perform a composite. So uh, this is what we're going to start by doing. So in the first instance, then we will focus on a key on on the actual selection of the green color, and this is absolutely pivotal. Key light has about 120 different properties, um, and every single one of these properties are concerned with refining the mat in terms of uh, thresholds and tolerances. But they all take their initial sort of baseline from this selection. So suffice to say that this selection is is absolutely critical. And you may think, well, we can click anywhere and we'll get a green and you know it may well be arbitrary but it'll be adequate. That's far from the truth. You know, there's a lot of range, even in a in a very sort of clear and well lit green screen like we're looking at in this particular sequence. There's lots of variances when we when we consider things like grain and things. There's lots of variances in this green and we could pick a, a colour which is far from the best to actually perform a, 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 the, a best possible key. So we need to make sure that this, this selection is as good as it possibly can be. And we're going to look at a couple of little tricks and a couple of views that are going to help us to do that. So in the first instance we will click on the swatch. That makes the screen colour selection active. And we can now come on to anywhere around the green screen, come up here for example, and just control click. Okay, and you can see there that we've made a basic screen color selection. If I just hit the A to look at the alpha channel, you can see that we've made a selection. We're starting to see the basis of a mat. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of problems, particularly around this area and also around the sort of the border between the face and the hair. A lot of problems with this mat. I think that we can make a much better green screen selection than we've made there. And we're going to use a view and a couple of keyboard tricks to help us. The first instance, we're going to switch over to screen mat view. This is a bit like I'll I'll, I'll go back to my RGB channel so we can see this. Screen mat is a kind of it's a bit like looking at the image in the alpha channel, and we can see we can see the sort of the separation between the transparent area which rec records as pure black and the opaque area which records as pure white. And that's certainly our objective to get the girl in 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 a state of almost complete opacity everything around it in a state of complete transparency except for an edge around the ar around the edge of the mat line where we should expect to see a sort of a, a thin area of semi-transparency and we should certainly start expect to see some semi-transparency around this fine hair detail where the light from the background is actually passing through the hair okay so let's look at how we can actually improve this green screen selection if we hold down control and alt and then start to pull around you can see that we get a dynamic change of the uh, of the of the mat and what so what we're looking to achieve here just by making this selection is we're looking to get the best possible area of black in the background and the best possible area of transparency once we've achieved that we can just release the mouse button and you can see there that we've got a much better selection. I'm just going to hit O to turn my overlays on. You can see that there's a little red dot, and that is basically telling us the precise pixel. If we come into here, you can see the variance in the green screen. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of grain, even though we can't really see it until we get right in. 
there's a lot of variance in the green screen that is the exact pixel that's been selected that this pixel RGB value that's stated up here in the key light properties is that is the color value of that precise pixel so you can see how an arbitrary selection would have got us a completely different result okay so maybe that's okay maybe we could do something with that but let's see if we can get it a little bit better still what we're going to do is we're going to change over to a different view called status and we'll just take a look at this it's a completely different animal essentially status it shows us a few different things which we'll we'll have a little look at shortly but one of the things that it does show us is it kind of shows us an exaggerated view of the screen map so we can see that where we thought that was actually quite a good mat it's actually, there's actually very little absolutely transparent pixels in the in the areas that we need to be fully transparent and there's a lot of semi-transparent areas within our subject which will translate to holes which will therefore show the background through so they, these these are things that we can't accept when we're performing a color key so let's look and see if we can actually refine this selection a little bit further in status and we can do that by using another keyboard shortcut which involves holding down the shift the alt and the control key and we can draw out and draw a marquee out now we know that this red area this red area that we selected we know that's a pretty good area so what we can do maybe is just start to drag out from there and see if we can see if we can get a better result on the background and on the foreground let's try a different area we know it's pretty good in this area I'll just come across it and see what you know that's not particularly good and what essentially is happening here is that key light is basically sort of selecting and analyzing all the pixel values within the red marquee that you can see and then it's averaging them together and it's a good way sometimes of actually getting the mat to its best possible state sometimes it works better than others in this case it's not giving me a great result so we'll just leave it at that but already you can see that we've got a slightly better area of, of, of transparent areas and slightly better opacity in the center so we'll click our picker again to disable that which means that that color is now locked in we can obviously go back and unlock it and choose again but it just that by unlocking it by locking it in like that just means that we can't click now and make an arbitrary selection and undo all the work that we've done we could have spent 15 20 minutes doing this selection and I probably would have had I been doing this for a commercial project but um, but I wouldn't want to undo that work by accidentally making an arbitrary selection by a because I forgot to uh, disable that so there we go it's now uh, it's now disabled and um, and it can't be we can't accidentally overwrite that green screen color so what we want to do now is we want to look at, at the use of the gain and if I just scrub the gain up into positive values you can see that that has quite a dramatic effect and what it essentially does is it takes this initial green value here and it work it, it basically allows a greater threshold of colors similar to it to actually be used to perform the uh, the alpha um, but obviously you can see there that as I go in the further I go in the more of this edge detail the quality of the mat is determined to a large extent by the edge detail and you can see that the more I go in the more I start to eat into that edge detail which can result in a very sort of choppy clunky kind of uh, mat with, and, and, a, and a very sort of uh, you know a very crude sort of separation between the transparent and opaque areas so the trick with gain is to use it very sparingly you can see there that I've, 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 I've increased it by 0 0.4 that's all and that's as far as I would ever want to to uh, to increase the gain any more than that and I'm going to start to eat into the, some of this important fine hair detail and there are actually better tools for refining these transparent and opaque areas anyway which we'll come to now so let's take a look inside the screen mat and you can see that the screen mat opens up an all new set of a subset of um, of trimming properties and the two that we're particularly interested in here is the clip black and the clip white the clip black is an additive process which means that you actually increase the number and as you increase the number it actually starts to sort of it starts to clean up the areas that we've designated as transparent and you can see there that fairly quickly with a value of 0 0.06 I've got rid of all the I've got rid of all the transparent areas, semi-transparent areas in the areas that I need to be fully transparent. So the clip white is a subtractive process whereby we we lower the value, and as we lower the value, we start to firm up the opacity in the in the matte areas. So again, I'm just bringing that down until I've got rid of all the holes that are in the in the mat. 
okay and you see I've come down to about 0.86 on that one another thing that I can do if I just come into this, uh, this this area here is I can actually use screen softness and I can just use that just to blur the alpha a little bit you've got to be very careful in fact if I go to screen map view we'll probably see this a little bit better you can see there that what it and what this essentially does is it just blurs the alpha it just allows a little bit more semi-transparency to come through through that blurring process so again you can go too far and it becomes you know and you just completely blow out the uh, the mat so again it's very subtle you know very very subtle in the way that you want to be applying that okay so let's say that we are happy to accept the mat as it is at the moment obviously we've got this good separation between the transparent and the opaque areas now why what about this area here we can if we remember if we come back to our our source we can see there that there was different tonality in the green screen um, that typically happens through the fall off of the lights or a um, or, or a transference from a from a back wall to a side wall um, or various other things uh, can result in that sort of that change of color so this is why we always want to be picking colors as close to our subject as possible because this is the area where we're likely to have fewer shadows and we're likely to have uh, less uh, less uh, fall off of the lights um, so this is where we'll be looking to uh, make our color selection and we can actually get rid of this through in in other means and the one the, the approach that we're going to use is to actually use a garbage mat and to do that we're going to actually be capitalizing on some of these uh, ports that are within the key light tool so to use a garbage mat we can you can use a uh, garbage mats in a number of ways you could you can actually use keys or various other things to do that I'm actually going to use a fairly straightforward approach which is to use a mask so to do that I'm going to bring up a roto node so I've just clicked into an empty space in the in the graph in the node graph and just hit the tab button and started to type and you can see there there's the roto node here it is at the moment I've not connected it up to anything um, and what I want to do with this now is I just want to take some of the drawing tools in this case the bezier tool and I'm just going to sort of click and just move around the subject and then close it now obviously nothing's happened uh, but you can see there that that's uh, that that's enclosed the subject now what I would always do at this point is I would just pull through the sequence just check all the frames just to make sure that she doesn't actually go out of the uh, out of that boundary at any point during the clip obviously if she was moving around a lot then I would have to animate that ma that mask but um, but in this case she's within the boundary and we know that we're kind of fairly safe within that uh, within that extreme so at the moment nothing's happening well, let's try connecting the output mask port to the uh, to the roto node. Still, nothing's happening. And the reason why nothing's happening is that at the moment the mask hasn't been told what to do. At the moment, it's still it's still outputting red, green, blue, and alpha alpha data, and we need to make sure that Keylight only uses the alpha data. So, if we click on Keylight and we come down to the crops, we can see here that we've got uh, an internal mat component, which is which we would configure from that port if we were using a mask for example to highlight a particular area within the boundaries of the subject say for example she'd got a brooch on that was catching a lot of spill from the lights and therefore it was there was a lot of green within the boundaries of the of the uh, of the, of the girl and that was causing us to have a hole uh, in the uh, transparent hole in her what we could do is we could actually create a mask and use it as an inside mask which is sometimes called a holdout mask and that would allow us to uh, to isolate that in this particular case we're dealing with the outsides so if we take a look at the outside mat component if we just change this now to alpha we'll just go back to the oh I'm still looking at the wrong view so let's go back into there if we just take a look at this um, in its final result and you can see that we've actually lost everything um, and that's because we've actually got this the wrong way around we've drawn the mask in the area over the over our subject and we've t we've now told um, told key light to actually use the transparency from that to uh, to, to create a, a, that, a, an alpha over that and at the moment that's covering our entire subject in fact the only bit that's actually visible in this is the area that we want to get rid of which is these sort of areas on the outside so what we need to do is we need to invert that change that to inverted alpha and now our subject is back and if we go back to status we can see now that this is showing as red which means that that is actually included in the mask if we go back to the composite view now and take a look at this you can see that we don't have any of these um, of these grotty sort of semi-transparent areas if I set that back to none 
you can see that we're actu we actually see those grey areas from the from the green screen actually in the composite. So by setting that to inverted mat, mat it means that that area is completely transparent now. This area that we used to perform the key is also fully transparent but our subject is fully opaque. Okay, so the composite view essentially performs the basic A over B merge of the background and foreground layer and this is a good tool for actually just cross-referencing our subject with the background that, uh, that that is intended. If we just take a look at this we can see that <coughs> excuse me you can see that there's still quite a bit of green within the uh, within the hair detail and that is obviously problematic also if we if we just zoom out a little bit we can see that there's a very sort of strong discrepancy both in tonality and color between the background and the foreground but what I'll do is I'll wrap up now and I will put together a, a follow-on tutorial which actually goes into how we can actually look at getting rid of this spill how we can uh, maybe add something like a light wrap so that we can actually bring some light and color detail from the actual background and combine it with uh, the semi-transparent areas around the edge of our map and then we'll look at uh, how we can uh, use uh, color correction nodes to uh, to tone match and color match the uh, the foreground and background layers. So we'll wrap up from at that point, and I hope you found that useful.